Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for All About Android is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by 99designs, the world's largest graphic design marketplace. 99designs connects businesses seeking quality, affordable designs with a community of more than 270,000 graphic designers. Visit 99designs.com slash AAA to receive a free power pack upgrade valued at $99. Hello and welcome to another episode of All About Android, episode 147, recorded on Tuesday, February 4th, 2014. We are your weekly source for the latest news, hardware, and apps for the Android faithful. I'm Jason Howell. I'm Ron Richards. And Gina is busy. Think, think Up is think demanding up. more and more of her time. They are, they are they are on stage, I think, right now at the New York <gasps> Tech Meetup, I think. Yeah. So wow. that's pretty cool. So if you're in New York City, maybe you're at that meetup and you're you're seeing their demo. <laughs> yeah, maybe you're you're there uh, yeah. at the meetup watching the demo and like under the table you've got your your yeah. device streaming all about Android. It's possible. Possible. I'll tell you, if that, if that meetup is anything like how it used to be, because I used to go to that meetup back in like 05, 06, 07, mm -hmm. like in the early days, and it was a brutal crowd. They were just like the demos were like Lots of, like, they wouldn't wait to ask questions and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. If it's still like that, then I'm wishing her all the luck in the world. So, that was a long time ago. <laughs> she doesn't so. need all the luck in the world. She doesn't think up it. is awesome. Exactly. But we have got a great uh, guest. Uh, well, yeah, as always, yeah. Phil Nickinson, uh, Android Central. Uh, it's just, it's awesome having you back on the show. Hey, it's good to be here. It's been a while. Am I that pink in, in person? That, I didn't want to say right? anything. Wow. It looks, I didn't want to say anything. Wow. It looks much uh, softer here through the monitor than through the Skype. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. I, yeah. I think enough. maybe Brian is giving you extra pink. I th yeah, he's turned up the pink. Yeah, it's the pink yeah. filter. Yeah. We, we were joking earlier. The lower third looks great. The top half, not so much. So I'll, I'll do what I can. There's only so much we can Whoa, do with the TriCaster. No, hey. don't, don't make Phil angry. We wouldn't like him feel, when he's angry. Feel a little, feel a little under the weather tonight. Now uh, that you're green, you fit in. This is wonderful. Um, uh, well, it's always a pleasure to have you on, and yes, it's it's true. It's been far too long. I'm not entirely sure why, but thank you for coming on yeah. on the show today. Good to have Were you. Were my checks not clearing or something? I don't know. Yeah, I, I know. Final, hmm. Finally, you paid me enough, and Wait I was a like, minute. all right. There, there are checks? Wait a minute. There's, there are payoffs? I don't see any of this. <laughs> Shut up on the checks, Phil. Jeez. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, we got a lot to talk about. I probably don't have to tell you because you know all about the big news, but uh, we'll be discussing <laughs> <laughs> Lenovo buying Motorola, Nexus uh, being a winner for, my, uh, for uh, Google, and uh, Chromecast SDK finally released, and there's just a lot more. So let's wait no more time let's get to the news so so, so if you wow. if you were on the internet <laughs> on wednesday last week and you heard the collective screaming coming from the petaluma san francisco area yeah. that was the that was collectively jason me and gina all at the same time <laughs> just like seriously I swear, all the big news in the in the world breaks the day after this sh the show is on. And it wasn't it wasn't even literally the fact that it was big news, but it was the fact that the night before on our show, <laughs> the number of times we referred yeah. to yeah. Google and Motorola. Yeah. And I, when this new, when I saw this news come across on Twitter, I literally did a spit take. Yeah. <laughs> I I literally like spit out my drink and immediately retweeted it, which I never do. And I was like, I got to tell Jason about this. And like, it was just like <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we got a lot of people writing into the show just to tell us how unfortunate our timing was with the episode last week. As if you didn't already realize I know, right. <laughs> Considering the very next day Google laid the bombshell press release that pretty much put the kibosh in all of our analysis uh, and conjecture. So think of that episode as like a time capsule to revisit when times were just much simpler. Lenovo bought Motorola for roughly $2.91 billion. Google originally paid $12 billion. For Motorola a few years ago, uh, they did also sell the set-top box division. Uh, I think like less than a year ago for 2.35 billion. So it's not a total loss monetarily. That's obviously not the the whole picture yeah. here. Uh, Google retains the majority of the roughly 17,000 patents that came from the Motorola Mobility acquisition. Uh, Google's CEO Larry Page said the company would continue to use those to defend the entire Android ecosystem. And uh, Google also keeps, actually, this is 
I think great news. The advanced, uh, the advanced technology group, which produces wow. or will produce the Project Ara modular phone project. Thank God. Yeah, because that, that really it's that, not like not like Lenovo is a bad company. Uh, no, so, no, yeah. no, totally. But uh, but this really feels very googly. Yes, right? and this what, feels like the first thing somebody would kill if they like they're like, oh, yeah, we don't need it. So, right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if we have to focus our efforts. Yeah. Uh, Phil, <laughs> you've had a whole week to think about this. What do you <laughs> what do you think about all this? You know, I mean, you, when something like this happens, you have that initial knee jerk reaction, and it's like somebody took your baby away. You know, yeah. like. God, and, and I felt that too. I've been using a Moto X since it came out. That's my daily driver. I love that phone. Yep. So your initial reaction is like, why? But I, ugh. and then you stop and you think about it for a minute. You say, all right, they kept all these patents. They kept the advanced design group, whatever. It's not a total monetary loss. And the Motorola that, that Google sold off to Lenovo is a very, very different Motorola as a company really? mm -hmm. than what Google bought, you know, and, and it's funny that they only held on to it, you know, product-wise for about a year. Not even a year, actually. We've had the Moto X since, what, August. Um, I, d I honestly just don't know. It's going to take a little while to see what comes out of this. Um, and I, I wrote something on Sunday that it's easy to, to have that initial freak out, tougher to actually know what Lenovo is going to do with it. Mm -hmm. Whether it's just a business deal for Lenovo's in and it gets them into the United States, whether it gets some sort of, of better Android phone, and, and I hate to say proper Android phone, but a really good Android phone into China at the same time that Apple is finally breaking into China. Um, there, I mean, there are just so many unknowns here to really have any idea. And honestly, I don't know that we're ever going to know the full story. I, I think there's going to be so few people within Google who actually know, you, I think I said it on our podcast Friday, who actually can see all the pieces that were in play there and let alone see them in the same room interacting with each other. There's just so much going on from a political standpoint, from a business standpoint. Um, that said, please, Lenovo, don't screw up Motorola because I, I really like what they were doing. <laughs> that's, that's the big, that's, that's my big feeling too is, you know, Motorola, the Motorola now, like you said, versus what they were even a year ago yeah. uh, is, is very different and so much better. And just doing great things. Continue doing great things, well, Lenovo. And that's probably a good segue to kind of hear from Lenovo yeah. as to what, you know, kind of the behind the scenes kind of the, with the deal. Um, and Fortune, Fortune interviewed the Lenovo CEO, I'm going to butcher his name, <laughs> Wang King Yang. Wang King Yang? Sure. Um, and CEO Yang said basically on how the deal happened, he said, right after Google bought Motorola, I invited Eric Schmidt to have a dinner at my house. I told him, if you think you want to run the hardware business, you can keep the business. But if you're not interested in the hardware business, we can definitely handle that, take over that. And Schmidt apparently remembered that and then called him two months late, uh, called two, him two months ago. Ago. Yeah, and he sent him an email. He called him back. He said, are you still interested in Motorola? And Lenovo said, definitely. And we started to discuss it. He went to Silicon Valley many times. Larry Page invited me to his house to have dinner. Very quickly, in just two months, we closed the deal. So wow. literally, two months is November. Is barely, no, it's no, it's December. Like this happened that quickly, which is Rapidly. kind of unheard of when it comes to the that large amount of money and, and kind of corporate kind of things. Um, in terms of the questions that we have about what, what Lenovo is going to do at Motorola, in terms of branding, they, uh, Yang said, no decision on the phones will have, no decision has been made on if the phones will have the Lenovo brand or Motorola, but, li but likely keeping Motorola, possibly Motorola by Lenovo, <laughs> which is nice. Mm -hmm. Um, in terms of customization, uh, Yang said, in my un understanding, Motorola does customization of phones in the U.S. If that is what the market needs, we will definitely keep that. It's a good model, so we may replicate that in other markets. And um, basically, the, when asked the question if Lenovo, now the number three smartphone maker worldwide with Motorola, um, can they compete with Apple or Samsung? And he says, definitely. Over time, our mission is to surpass them. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, If anyone in his position isn't saying that, that their their mission is to be number one, then they're probably not the right person for the job because yeah. that should be everybody's uh, mission. It's fun, funny how some people don't quite always get that. It's yeah, like, yeah. Right. <laughs> but that's good. It sounds like they're hungry. It sounds like they wanted it. You know, like and, and the thing is, like Lenovo. I mean, before I moved to Mac, I I used the Lenovo ThinkPad. I mean, once they bought it from IBM, and I used yeah. that for years after that purchase happened. And they make good machines. And they make good hardware. And that's what a lot of people are saying is yeah. you can you can take a look at what Lenovo did um, with their ThinkPad. Uh, yeah. 
kind of strategy. And you know, they did great things, and they haven't they haven't gone in there and completely you know reorganized it and redesigned it and made it something completely different. They kind of stuck to the brand, which yep. I think they'd be crazy not to do with Motorola, especially kind of the good place that Motorola is at right now. Although I gotta say, if you work at Motorola, your head must be spinning. Yeah, to have two I acquisitions know. in a year, and and especially like you're like we scored Google. Yeah, yeah we Google, made it. We we're made gonna get, it. We're oh. gonna get that sweet. We're gonna get the dry cleaning, and we're gonna <laughs> get the, the all the perks and the bicycles, and it's gonna be what awesome. What about the bikes? I know. Oh man. But, and, uh, and that's the big question: What happens to all these people? Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, the the headcount at Motorola was was down from what it used to be because they were they call it whatever you want. They were laying people off. Yeah. Um, but what happens to the people who were there? How many of them actually want to work for Lenovo? Or and not to say Lenovo is a bad company, but that's something you have to think about when your company's bought out. Is well, you know, I thought I was working for Google or people who came in. You know, that's just another aspect of this whole thing that we don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's. I mean, it's so early on. We obviously won't know the answer to these things for a while. Uh, the as far as the customization aspect, what. If you had to put your money on it, what do you think? Do you think well, customization is going to continue? No. I don't just think hear so his response. He's like, oh, they, they do that, right? Okay. Well, if people I know, like if I people like that was it, kind then of funny, we'll, yeah, actually. Like In my <laughs> understanding, Motorola does customization of phones. Yeah. You're right. That company that you I, just bought for I hear the I hear, Ameri I hear the Americans like it. So uh, maybe we'll keep it. It's yeah, like like oh I that know. that's the one where if you're a big customization fan, you gotta be worried. But then mm -hmm. it's just widgets to him, to, to them. I mean they're just, you know, phones of different colors and things like right. that. Whether or not it, it it blows out the customization dream that Motorola and Google Motorola had to make the phone totally customizable is another story, but um but yeah. So I can imagine being like they're doing what? <laughs> with color? No. Yeah. We'll see. I know. Wait, they're doing different color phones? That's that's that's, that's crazy. That's why would anybody want that? But um, but it'll it'll be really curious. I mean, I thought I um, you know, we noted that Project R will stay with Google. That does feel like a more Googly thing. Um, and the thing is, like, if they just keep the you know keep the progress that Motorola is making and just throw the Lenovo hardware support behind it. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if we can see a lot of impact on price per phone, driving the price down, because now you have a big su supply chain behind you with Lenovo. And to be honest, we were just talking that Google is becoming a consumer electronic company, but now not so much. So it's, you got to wonder. You, oh, even like in yeah. the hardware space? Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. but Google has, has basically said, like, this is not an indication of getting out of hardware. Nest, you know, yeah. they're, they're not. At least they're saying they're not. Their plans are not to get rid of Nest so in, they're gonna in buy, the same way. They're gonna buy the HTC? smartphone market is very is yeah. very fill, you know, filled yeah. and volatile, and, and yeah. you know there's not a whole lot of of you know room for them to kind of really shake things up. There, I think, is what they've realized. Yeah. Um, something like you know wearable technology like glass, or you know the uh, the Internet of Things with with Nest and all that kind of stuff that ties into their data needs and you know the mm -hmm. things that they can gain from that. And it's also not a very crowded space I would, they can shake things up there. I would just love to know what the conversation at Google between Eric Schmidt and Larry Page and Sergey Sergey were to be like, okay, let's get rid of it after less than a year. Like I wonder you No, know, you know what it was? It was saying, all right, how much did it lose last quarter? Yeah. How much did it lose this quarter? Yep. Wow. Yeah. Probably that, that was it. So I mean it doubled. I forget if it was year over year or quarter over quarter uh, from Q three to Q four. I think it was year over year, but I mean it doubled at one point. So yeah. We'll see. Yep. As we like to end a story uh, of this magnitude with, we'll just have to wait and see. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, I hope your fingers are ready. It's time for some breaking news. <laughs> Somebody was asleep I, at the desk. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. And let me tell you, this is a doozy right here. Thank you to our wonderful chatters in the chat room at irc.twit.tv. That's right. Brace yourselves. Android platform distribution numbers have been updated. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting on the edge of my seat. I heard happy, that they might come out today. I oh, didn't man. know. <laughs> happy we got that in there. Man, what would this show be if well, we You're didn't? really feeling the sting from last week, aren't you? <laughs> Just like, <laughs> hey, I don't want this to go a whole week, man. Yeah. Yep. This, is, this is huge. Uh, now I just have to look at it and read what it says. Uh, <laughs> Jelly Bean, 59.1%, up to 60.7%. All right, so one percentage there. This is exciting stuff here, let me tell you. Uh, Kit Kat is up to 1.4%. 
It made another, oh no, from 1.4 to 1.8%. Uh, and those are kind of the, the major ones to pay attention to. Yep. You're, you're not going to see any huge changes until no. Samsung starts pushing it out. It's just that simple. Right. And I'm sure we're going to talk a little bit about what does a device that might uh, be associated with here very soon. But you're right. The, the, the new devices uh, launching right now, and especially the devices by Samsung that move in great, great quantities yep. coming out with those uh those newer versions of uh, Android. So there we go. Not the biggest news in the world, but a great reason. But still is breaking. breaking news. So, yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah, hey, we have to <laughs> we have to respect breaking news. Yeah. No matter. Thank you. Oh, look at look at Brian trying to recover. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, Brian. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so sources uh, were telling Recode that Samsung and Google had discussions at CES this year that may have led to an agreement. That may see Samsung toning down its customizations and actually featuring Google services in a more prominent way uh, than they have in the past. And that would kind of be a big deal. This is in light of Samsung's new magazine UX uh, that alarmed Google and supposedly prompted the discussion. One source went on to say that their relationship has undergone a sea change in the last few weeks. That sounds nice. Now, consequently, Samsung unveiled four new tablets today all of which include the new magazine UX with no option to disable the interface. They're the Galaxy Note Pro 8.4 and 12.2, as well as the Tab Pro 8.4 and 10.1. Um, you know, you can probably assume that even if there were changes to be made, you know, that Samsung had a, ch a change yep. of face and is like, okay, well, maybe we'll tone it down. Uh, these were probably so late into the process that, you know, it's not like they're going to delay the release of, of their hardware. They have uh, dates that they have to meet here. So that, that could be what we're seeing. Or these are these, these reports to recode these sources, as they say, uh, could be full of it. I, I, I think we're really reading a lot into this. And that's, yeah. not, to discount, <laughs> in, that's not to discount Ina's story, because I know mm -hmm. Ina, and I love Ina. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think we need to be a little careful of how far we run with that. Yeah. Because... I mean, how is that different than than any other launcher? How is that different than what we saw Facebook Absolutely. try to do last year? Yep. Um, that was I have feeling what we might see is is maybe they're working a little more closely to try to make sure things work the first time. Um, you know, Samsung, if you're going to have your own gallery app, and that's cool that you do because look, Motorola has its own gallery app and its own calendar app. They look mm -hmm. the same, but they are they are different. They are completely different applications. So maybe you know the GS4. And that entire generation had some serious issues when it when it came to performance on some of its own apps, um, and and we saw you know updates had to take care of that. Um, and it it just was not a good experience. I could see Google and Samsung sitting down and saying, "Look, if you're going to do that, fine. Let us help you try to make these better before you put them out there." And I, that's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, th yeah. I yeah, I think I think a lot of it is diversification of products, and like we, I, I, if I was running, if I was a product guy working at a company with an Android phone, I would be pushing the designers and the techs to make it as unique as possible because that is a selling point. And one of the great things about Android, at least in my mind, is that it is a open platform that allows you to make tweaks and allows you to say, okay, look, our product does this, which is unlike those other guys, which I still want to see. Mm -hmm. You still want to see innovation, you know, because then as we've seen, stuff comes out and people adapt it and it works its way back into Android and that's how the whole thing going. So, you know, I agree. I think we're reading a bit too much into it. Um, I think it's good also, though, but that, that Samsung is also willing to admit, okay, listen, we don't want to stray too far from center. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, it's, it's a nice medium of the two. Yeah, it, it did strike me as kind of odd when I when I read this, um, just from the sheer fact that that's kind of what Android has always been about. Right. It's yeah. like, you know, take it and run with it and make it your own. I do understand that Google has a lot to gain when Samsung, you know, keeps it a little bit closer to the original vision and, you know, keeps it as tied into their services and all that kind of stuff. But they don't have to. And in fact, they haven't for a long time. Their, their entire strategy on Android is about differentiating it as much as it possibly can from the other players in the space. Um, so for, you know, for this particular UI, which I don't think looks bad. No. I think it looks kind of current. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of design happening right now that looks similar to that. I, and yeah, I found it kind of hard to believe that, that Google saw that and was like, wait Whoa, a minute. slow down there. That's a little slow too down. far. Listen, that Facebook. That looks a little too well des designed. Even though I, know, I realize we just bought AV8 <laughs> and it kind of does some things that are similar to what maybe you see, you know. Yeah. Like, I don't know. <laughs> 
It's true. Yeah, I wonder what the line is, whether, you know, what, what Facebook does something, but Samsung can't, and you know, or, right. or is it too close to Aviate, or is it too close to X, or whatever whatever else might be out there. Yeah. Um, Flipboard. Or, you know, Flipboard. HTC had Blink Feed this time last year. Yeah. So it's not the first time we've seen a magazine-y UI no. come into play. So I, I really think it's probably something a little different. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if you are interested in those tablets, by the way, uh, you can look for the Wi-Fi models to launch February 13th, starting at $399, going all the way up to $849 <laughs> for the 64-gig Note Pro 12.2-inch tablet. There you go. Woo! You got to love your tablet. It also doubles as personal yeah. self-defense, so <laughs> yes. that's what I don't want to work. <laughs> it doubles as your windshield for your car. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. You Walk the sun on a hot day. Yes. <laughs> it's big. Really big. Well, while we're talking about Samsung, uh, last week we had the heated discussion around Google and Samsung's uh, 10-year patent agreement. Uh, and, you know, a, a, not a week can go by without talking about patent. Uh, yeah, you got agrees. the patent story this time. I'm on time. the patent beat. Yep. Um, today, though, the news expanded that uh, Google reached a long-term agreement with Cisco that covers a broad range of products and technologies. Uh, the cross-licensing cross -licensing deal is structured such that even the patents that are sold to, to another company, Google and Cisco, Cisco, are still protected from them. So uh, basically another agreement with a huge uh, hardware manufacturer, Although Cisco, what, what does Cisco make? You know, yeah. if you think about that, um, think about deeply. I mean, whether or not this is so much phone stuff or more Google in the home, routers, I think, I you think, know, yeah, things I think like it's that. just really yeah. indicative of Google's broader kind of yep. products or patent strategy right yeah. now, which I, I, I hope uh, means good things for for everyone, not yep. just Android. But. Yeah, and I mean, there's nothing wrong with licensing patents. That's the way it's supposed yeah. to work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. And hopefully, this hopefully it's less lit litigation now. You know, because yeah, we got right. more partnership and more working together. So, uh, so there you go. Google and Cisco going out on a date mm. with their patents. They they make a good couple. They do. <sighs> okay, so um, I was tweeted the I think the day or two a day or two after the Lenovo Motorola news. It's a kind of, kind of a good general question that I thought we could all kind of bat around for a little bit. Uh, let's see here, and I, I missed his name here. Doug Forsythe says, I was literally minutes away from ordering a Moto X when I heard about this, the Lenovo news, on Wednesday. Is it still worth it? <laughs> uh, he, he continued, actually keep that up, Ryan, because I don't have that in front of me. He continued to say, or will Lenovo taint the clear waters, do you think? I'd rather not end up with it being updated to another skinned Android. What do you guys think, if you then, had to put no, your money on it? No, your, your Moto X is not going to get an update one day <laughs> and have be... some crazy UI on top of it now. <laughs> Yeah. It's, it's just not going to happen. I If it happens, I will buy that guy a new phone. I will do that for you because that's <laughs> the hell of a guy that I am. Doug just, Forsyth, yeah. you just you just struck internet gold right there. I mean, he's he's not wrong. I mean, no. just buy the phone. The no, phone the phone exactly. is the phone and it exists. It's yeah. going to be fine. Um, and it's a great phone. It's exactly. still a fantastic phone. In you, fact, I would say buy it while you can because you never <laughs> yeah. know what tomorrow might, might come. That is a really good point. <laughs> it's uh, it's still know. a great phone and you yeah. can still get it. Yeah. You never it, know. It's what. actually really good timing for for this whole deal to have gone down because there's a bit of a buffer period right we shouldn't expect a new major revision of android till late you know this year till november yeah. probably right late october november so even if it misses out on you know a small update here or there and and by the way the moto x and moto g are getting 442 like right this second um it's you know we've got a ways to worry about that still, and then there's always the custom ROM route. Should should anything really bad happen? Sure. Yep. So yes, Moto X still a great uh, great decision, great device, it's a good option. Go for and, it and uh, go for you know one of the fancy backing uh, ebony and, or whatever. Yeah, get the bamboo while you can, yes. and take a picture with your phone and post on Twitter so we can get a. a we never really get the the end of the story. People write in, and we never hear yeah. what, if they take our advice. Or, <laughs> Here's or if what even, happened. But they've even heard it. I would like to hear the end of the story, Brian Forsyth. So there you go. <laughs> you're you're looking for rece like receipt confirmation. I need closure. That's what I'm. <laughs> that's what I'm looking for. I don't need a receipt. I'll trust. A photo will be fine. I just want at least some acknowledgement that that our me our our message was heard and that he you know agreed or disagreed. So there you go. and why he asked you and not me. But whatever. We won't get into that. So I don't know. <laughs> Jason, I really Look, need to know. <laughs> I don't know. You just you you don't you don't talk to people on Twitter anymore I these do. days. Well, a little bit. Yeah, I've been busy. 
Yeah, I understand. We've yeah. all been very, very, yeah. very busy. <laughs> Let's take a break and thank our sponsor of today's episode. That's 99designs. Have you been dreaming about the perfect logo or website design, but you don't know how to get started? That's what 99design is all about. Are you worried about budgets? They can help you with all of this stuff. They are the world's largest graphic design marketplace, and they kind of kick butt. Uh, they make it easy to uh, get a design you love. You just go to the website, tell them about the design that you need. You pick a price package that works for you, and then, you know, it. It's actually a pretty fun process. Designers from around the globe are going to submit awesome designs and give you and and basically await your feedback. Within a week, you'll pick your favorite and be the proud owner of a gorgeous new design. With over 270,000 designers at your fingertips, there's no limit to what you can get designed. You can boost your brand's visibility with a t-shirt, car wrap design, drive more traffic with a, a nice new banner ad or landing page. Uh, projects start at just $199. And 99 Design says your happiness is always 100% guaranteed. I just so, want, a, I want a project that I get to use them on. I feel mm. like I'm missing out. Well, check mm. this out. Mm. Alan Jack uh, sent an email to us. He says, I'm an avid fan of All About Android. He's written a book on, on using Android, which will launch in the Kindle and Google Book stores shortly. Uh, he says, I use 99 Designs to design the book cover Oh. And I'm overwhelmed with the response. I used the freebie power pack uh, AAA code, which supercharged my project. Now my problem is I have too many good design submissions. Wow. <laughs> Since you guys got me into this dilemma, I asked for your help choosing a winning design. Please, <laughs> will you... <laughs> Since you guys got me into this dilemma. <laughs> <laughs> it says, please, will you check out the link and let me know which design you prefer? Oh, let's uh, do it, can we? <laughs> well, I think we... Yeah, I'm not sure that we can necessarily vote because, you know, he's the one that... that how many has did, the, how many you have did to log get? in to do that but he got a ton so you can kind of scan through and see just there are all 12 of the... entries wow no he got more than that he it's got 12 more. entries yeah go oh go that's oh that's the, the 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 designer keep scrolling keep scrolling keep scrolling keep scrolling look at all those oh wow i know that's just These like are one page really many. good yeah i know they're all and i'm not saying that like like i'm surprised like i'm i'm really impressed look at that one i really like that one <laughs> Well, that's, uh, I mean, this is kind of a, just a good example of what 99designs is all about, right? Uh, Alan had an idea for a project. He d he's not a designer himself. He that's put so it to cool. the community. The community comes back with tons of useful stuff. Now he has the reverse problem. Now he has too yeah. many great ideas, yeah. and he got to pick one. The, the best part about that, of course, is that you end up with a great one no matter which one you end up uh, deciding on. So uh, there you go. Oh, if like you want to be overwhelmed <laughs> with design choices for your project, you can do this to yourself. All you have to do is visit 99designs.com slash AAA. You'll get a $99 power pack of services for free, as Alan did here. A power pack actually gives you more designer time and attention. 99designs will bold, highlight, and feature your design project in 99designs marketplace. You'll get nearly twice as many designs obviously. Uh, visit 99designs.com slash AAA and we thank 99designs for their continued support of all about Android. You guys are great and obviously people uh, think you're great too. They're using the service and it's very effective. I should I should use them to redesign my Twitter avatar. <laughs> you could do that. Yeah, I know. You yeah. could do that. Yeah, that'd, be, that'd be fun. There you go. Um, all right. Let's get into hardware. <laughs> I love that. It's so beautiful. Yeah. It's so serene. It's, it's calming. Yeah, yeah. I like it. Gets you right, ready for hardware. Yeah, I'm, I'm ready for hardware. Oh, anyway. <laughs> um, so those of you in the um, those of you in the finance community know that it's that wonderful time of year called uh, earnings call time. Um, mm. And Google had its fourth quarter earnings call last week. And there was mm. some talk about the success of the Nexus 5 with CFO Patrick Pichette saying multiple times that the Nexus 5 performed very strong during the quarter, continuing by saying that Google was very happy with the sales. The Chromecast was Google's best-selling product of the quarter, no doubt thanks to its low price and impressive capabilities. Hardware and Play Store sales are some of the fastest-growing revenue sources for Google at the moment. And if you waited this long to get a Nexus 5, you're being rewarded with a new choice – the Nexus 5, my preferred phone on Android, is now available in red, which I totally Ooh. want. And I'm kind of mad that it wasn't available when it came out. But so now it's available and you get it for the same price, $349 for 16 gig or $399 for 32 gig. And I want it badly. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Yeah. So what it's very we sweet. 
Don't read too much into the cheerleading on the uh, the earnings call. Oh, of course not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course they're going to say that. Yeah. Yeah, I saw those stories. It's like, were we listening to the same call? Because they didn't really say anything, but all right. <laughs> <laughs> I, also, I also like what we were referring to an article. What was it? On, um, on The Verge or... Yeah, it was on the verge where they said Google calls Nexus Five a sales winner. It's like, all right, that's you know, like it's what like, else were they gonna say? <laughs> oh, yeah. yep. But uh, it worked. I think it's fair it to say that they're pleased. Children. I think it's fair to say that they're pleased with it, and they're gonna be positive about it, and they're gonna want you know. So I don't know. Yeah. The problem was everybody was waiting for them to say something like, you know what, this is the last year we're doing the Nexus line. Elder right. was right. Yeah. yeah, and it's just not gonna happen. They, yep. They're talking about their babies. They're going to, you know, we all have the cutest kids ever. Jason's kids are all right. Mine are better. I have the cutest hey. kids you've ever seen. <laughs> Point taken, but my kids are cuter than yours. It's, all, it's, all, it's also all about, create, it's all about creating the conversation and creating the, the moments of that. I mean, admittedly, I, I, you know, yeah. a, part, a part of my job is marketing and that sort of thing. And, and we, I declare our products to be hits because they, they are hits. We've got, we've got all these sales and people are liking it. So it's a hit, you know, yeah, like, yeah. you know. Um, and I think the Nexus 5 is something that, you know, yes, there's some hyperbole around Google's, you know, kind of talking about it in terms of its performance, but it's a it's a darn good phone. And I, and I think the price point and the unlocking aspect of it, and I've yet to talk to anybody who's not, well, actually, I will take that back. One of my coworkers got one and has had horrendous um, antenna reception. Like in his office, he cannot get more than one or two bars, hmm. which is very bizarre because I'm in the office next to him and I get full bars. So I don't know if it's because he's on Sprint and I'm on T-Mobile or like we're trying to figure out. He also has a, a pillar in his office. So I'm wondering if there's metal in the, like, you right. know, but, but that was the first person that was last week. That's the first person who's ever given any sort of negative comment about the Nexus 5 hmm. after owning it. So uh, All I know is a red one makes me kind of. Right. Mm, yeah. Can you just take this? Because, oh, this black one. I just, I need the red one now. That's just, oh. Anyways. Uh, so, Samsung, huh? Ready for an all new Broadway extravaganza brought oh, no. to you courtesy of Samsung? <laughs> Who knows if they're going to do the, the Broadway show, but we can only hope. Uh, I, I don't, I don't wish it on any reporter that has to be there for it, but oh, they sure are on. fun to watch on YouTube. And it's going to be, I would, I was there last year. It was fun. Yeah. <laughs> so this this one is in Barcelona? Yep. yep. I will be at this one as well. Is, Bar Excellent. is Barcelona known for its theater? Do they have... It's known for bullfighting, which the could make a whole other yes. kind of unpacked, actually. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. No kidding. <laughs> the what? What is the Broadway of Barcelona? What is the Great White Way of Spain? I don't know. Is it? Yeah. But, um, I mean, they could do it on La Rabla with all the the street performers and the uh, the women of the evening later yeah. on in the day, and and that could be a whole other thing. Also, also, what about the term unpacked? I feel like from a marketing standpoint, unpacked doesn't really. I get what they're trying to say, like they're unboxing oh, yes, it, they're but unboxing I, I feel it. like the word unpacked is not very marketing sexy. Hmm. <laughs> I said the same thing about the very first one where they announced some phone called the Samsung Galaxy S. And, well, I was wrong. <laughs> well, were you, apparently it works. Were you, though? Were you? I mean, I don't know. I still don't think the Galaxy S is such a great name, but that's just me. Yeah, it's, I'm it's with you, It's worked Phil. out all right for him, though. Yeah, it keeps working. I'm with you. Uh, that is scheduled February 25th. Uh, in Barcelona, as we said. Barcelona. So, you got to say it correctly. Bar Barcelona. 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 <laughs> Thank you for the flag, Ryan. Uh, was it the correct flag? Okay, good. All right. Just, just got to make sure. All I saw was the tail end of a flag. That totally made up for missing the breaking news yes. cue, by the way. Good. I'm actually very impressed from a TD standpoint that he was able to load that job, up as quickly Brian. as he was. Right. By uh, the way, that's, that's going to be uh, 1 o'clock noon. That's going to be 10 a.m. on the West Coast for you guys. So we're day. probably going to be doing some sort of live coverage of it. Uh, of some. No, you're not. You're going to do something the next day. Come on. I don't oh. know. We're you're you're going to miss it. I don't, wow. I don't that's, that's, that seems like a gauntlet. Wait a minute. Did you say 10 a.m. or 10 p.m.? Uh, 10 a.m. your time. A.m. 10 a.m. Yeah, we would yeah. we would live cover that. I would yeah. Okay. I don't I, know I for sure that we will, it. but we have in the past. I was taking a swipe at you guys just missing the news on the show. Sorry. Oh, oh yeah. See, we don't yes. find that funny. <laughs> oh. Okay. That's okay. Hey, Brian, if you could go ahead and disconnect with Phil, we're going to continue <laughs> on with the show. Thanks. <laughs> it's been great. I'll show off your app for you, and I'll claim it as my own. Uh, anyways, Galaxy S5. Uh, 
uh, what is it? A quad HD Super AMOLED is rumored, 5.25 inch display. That's beyond 500 pixels uh, per inch. Why? There you why? Go. Yeah. Well, yeah. Quad HD. Yes. Yes. Why? But when I saw a 1080p display on the Droid DNA, I said, "Okay, I get it." I will never forget that moment. I. I it was I, the Twitter I, avatars that did it. Yeah, yeah, it was. I know, I know, I know. Yes. I, don't, I remember that moment. I remember what you were wearing. <laughs> no, I don't remember what you were wearing, but I'm just saying. <laughs> Good, I'm happy you don't remember that. Um, no, I completely agree, Phil. I, I see that, and I'm like, yeah, you don't need that because 1080p is enough. But, you know, I probably said the same thing when I saw 720p and that's, that's, everything and, before. And in 1947, that's what you would have said when you heard radio for the first Ooh, time. And yes, exactly. <laughs> you saw those new Why do I TVs? need color on TV? Know. Black and white is just fine. <laughs> what are these movies with talkie? <laughs> talking? I blew. <laughs> I enjoy uh. using my imagination. <laughs> uh, well, so there we go. All right. So uh, a little bit of email. Uh, we got e a little bit. A little bit. It's actually <sighs> a lot here. I, I can't even scroll down to see. If, if you want to split up the the points, I'll I'll read some too. Yeah. Well, hang on a second. I don't uh, okay. So who actually wrote it in? What is the person's name? Uh, R M K I L C. R M. Yeah, that's what I was having a problem with. R M K I L C says. Go. Uh, <laughs> renaming Nexus is one thing. And this is in reaction to our conversation last week. Right. But dropping them all together is another. Google Play Edition devices are not the same as Nexus devices. The only thing in common they have, the, the only thing they have in common is they appear to run stock Android and they are sold on Google Play. Here are some of the reasons why Nexus is so great. He's a Nexus fanboy. Mm -hmm. Google doesn't post binaries or factory images for Google Play Edition devices. They do for Nexus devices. That's a pretty important one. Google Play Edition devices don't have a straightforward unlockable bootloader. For example, the HEC1 still requires S off, the GS4 still requires Odin, and the Sony Z Ultra still requires an unlock code from Sony. Nexus devices unlock exactly the same super easy way, regardless of the manufacturer. You can really see how Nexus devices are pure Google, while the Google Play Edition devices still have a ton of manufacturer influences. The Google Play Edition devices are usually based on hardware for a specific carrier, therefore lack the wide diversity of radio bands the Nexus devices have. Nexus devices pr specifically have many bands to work on a variety of characters of uh, carriers. <laughs> Google Play Edition devices don't have the consistent nav bar, internal battery, no SD card, uh, and no SD card slot that the Nexus devices have. Fragmentation much? Nexus devices are true Android how Google envisions it. And do we need to mention price? Which we did mention. Which you Yep. Regardless of what they're called, thinking that they're the same thing and can be put in the same category is simply not true. Yeah. yeah it, and I, uh, yes, thanks for the, the tone there. Yeah. Uh, yes, we missed, we missed a few of these, but I, th I thought it was a good, a good kind of display of some of the ways that they are, in fact, different. And, yeah. you know, when you kind of read through this, it makes more sense why Google wouldn't. Right get rid of the Nexus brand. And, they well, and especially when you consider that they sold off Motorola, yep, right? Yep. So suddenly mm -hmm. you're not in the handset business anymore. Yep. You still have this really awesome design team with Nest to do other things, but now you're going to you're going to have to rely on those partners more than ever if you want to get your vision of what an Android smartphone should be out there. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, could they be look, we go through this every year. This is going to be the last Nexus. There won't be a <laughs> Nexus this year. Um, eventually it might well happen, but we're talking about 2015 at this point. It's so much can happen between now and then. Yeah. yeah. And also the majority of our conversation around that was built around Motorola. Oh, I know. Which, totally. is just, which just killed me. So. <laughs> so who knows? But anyway, we appreciate the email. It's always good to hear the uh, audience's point of view. Absolutely. So, um, especially just, in a in a the, tone. Just watch the tone, please. <laughs> no, I like your it. Point, I like your it. point taken. <laughs> I like it. I forgot what somebody <laughs> said. I forgot that somebody made a really passive-aggressive comment about me. I forgot what it was, but it was G. I love it when that happens, when they write in. <laughs> it's great. I Bring on the snark. Uh, I didn't hear your tone. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I omitted part of the tone. Oh, you did? Way. Really? Yeah. Oh, there was, I was the other original. snarky tone in there. Oh, I was I like, I don't snark. want, like, why? You don't yeah. need to put that in there. Point taken. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, let's get into apps. So cool. We have yes. been waiting for this day for so long. Google Play Services 4.2 released yesterday, I believe it was, and it brings with it something we have asked for so many times. All of us, the collective all of us, not just us on the show. Developers can now integrate their apps with the Google Cast SDK, allowing anyone to cast their app to the big screen by way of Chromecast. Cast all the things. 
Uh, and speaking of casting all the things, it only took 12 hours from the announcement to, I think, the official release of the, or update to the Play Store for uh, Koch Dada to integrate the Chromecast capability back into Allcast. And, uh, you know, if, if you don't recall, Koch had kind of put together Allcast shortly after Chromecast was released and was kind of relying on, uh, you know, exposed but not released, not officially released uh, parts of the SDK to kind of make it work with Chromecast. Google made an update and that, that broke the capability. And then it's just kind of been a matter of time of, okay, when is this going to be released so we can get that awesome functionality back in this app? Because this app, as far as I'm concerned, is a must have. Yep. And it's back. Good for him for getting it on. It's I mean, he back. probably he probably it was like it's like waiting at the starting gate, you know. But like, I don't know. <laughs> he he's kind of on Google Plus. He's taken a very kind of blase approach uh, mm -hmm. bef before this, just kind of like you know what, hey, whatever, like right. you know, because I think I think a, a part, if I remember correctly, uh, thinking back to when it happened, I think he had a post that was kind of like, hey, you know, Google, you broke my app, and I think ultimately it probably wasn't Google saying, all right, we're going to make sure that you can't use this. Right. It probably they. They just weren't public, you know, publicly accessible uh, or publicly officially released. Right. So, you know, tapping into it is kind of like at your own risk. Right. Uh, but having said that, Google reached out to Coach shortly after uh, Chromecast uh, SDK was announced and basically like convinced him and said, hey, literally you have to make hardly any changes to your code. This is going to take you 15 minutes. And it, and it did. So it was a very easy uh update yeah. so so for developers that are thinking about adding chromecast uh, support to your app it sounds like it's really easy and uh let's do it because we need more apps that use chromecast that tap into the cast a api yep it's a, good thing. Okay. it's a good thing it'll be interesting to see what comes up what comes out of it i know they want uh many devices and many apps or many not devices but many apps to have that casting capability um potential to change everything so we'll see Awesome. Uh, talk about changing everything. Uh, you Google Maps, Google Maps users are continuing to uh, bask in the uh, positives of getting Waze integrated into Google Maps. Uh, now Maps will tell you when it recognizes a faster route while you're literally on the move. Um, when you're going somewhere with navigation, it will pop up and say, faster route now available, save 10 minutes, except. Um, <laughs> except. Except. Um, and they're calling it navigation with dynamic rerouting. Yeah. Um, which is very, very cool because I'm very the kind of person who looks at the, what the navigation tells me. I'm like, no, I know a faster way. Yeah, <laughs> so, I know, right? <laughs> or I'll, I'll spend a lot of time driving and looking down to look at the traffic lines. And like, so um, I'm going to give this a try on the way home. We'll see if it actually works. So. If it finds a faster route. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, cool. I just don't use maps nearly as much as I did when I lived in San Francisco and worked in Petaluma. It's kind of a bummer because well, and I also I travel all the time I, and, and I, I travel a lot too. So like yeah. I'll end up. I mean, like I'm looking at I'm looking at a lot of time in Atlanta uh, at the end of this month and restaurants and things like that. Google, I can't live without Google Maps. Yeah. I was just li actually, I posted this on Google Plus last night. I watched one of my favorite movies that I rented through Google Play and I watched on my Chrome TV. Um, uh, my yeah, not Chromecast. Chrome TV, not Chromecast, um, Google TV. Ah. Um, Quick Change from 1990 with Bill Murray and Gina Davis and Randy Quaid. It's a great movie from, yeah, there it is, from, uh, it's a real ode to- Oh, man, I remember the cover. I don't remember. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, it, basically, they rob a bank in the very beginning, and the rest of the movie is them trying to get to the airport, and all these things get in the way, and it's a real ode to New York City of the, of the late 80s, but- um, there's one moment where they're lost in Brooklyn and they can't find the BQE and they pull over and ask a guy for directions and he pulls out a map and, and, I was, and like, I'm sitting there and I'm like, that? oh my God. And this is like 24 years ago. It's not even that long ago where it just seems so foreign and so alien that that's what he was doing. So, oh, so yep. true. So there you go. So. Quick change, go rent it. A dollar ninety nine. I was gonna say it's got to yeah. be a pretty cheap rental. Oh, super cheap. I, I actually, I literally thought, I literally thought it was nine ninety nine to buy it, and I thought about buying it. That's how good that movie is. But, so, no. When is the last time any one of us has had to pull out a, a paper map? A what? You know? Yeah, a exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh man, I can't even remember. Yeah, I know. I, I thought about that the first year I, I went to Mobile World Congress, and it's like, how did we? How did people go places and do things before these smartphones and, yeah. and Google Maps? And just no idea. Yeah, and I mean, they did, so they made it happen. You just got to yeah. Yeah, buy the maps and also be good at reading them because right. that is kind of a skill. It's kind of like how cursive writing is going away. Like oh, reading gosh. maps, yeah. the ability to like read a paper map and understand like. 
this is what I need to do is getting more and more difficult for well, generations. And, and never having to ask for directions anymore. Google right. Maps has done more to advance men being right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Well, I'll, n I'll never forget when I was se when I was 17 or 18, when I was 18, and I went out on the road. I, I roadied for a summer in my friend's band, and the day I left, my dad got me a, a atlas, like a U.S. <laughs> atlas, and it was like the 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 Rand McNally, whatever it was the kind that folded uh -huh, uh -huh. and had a plastic sleeve you're supposed to keep in the car. And he's yeah. like, so you don't get lost. And this is like 1995, and it, like, yeah. sure enough, I spent two months driving throughout the country. I used that atlas like crazy because we're in the middle of Iowa trying to figure out how to get to Texas, and mm -hmm. you know, and you need it. And so uh, now you just pull out the phone, and it works. So we're spoiled. You Hopefully, kids. you have a power source to plug your phone into. Exactly. Otherwise, you're lost. Well, I've got screwed. my battery. You carry the yeah. battery. You carry <laughs> 90 of those external batteries. And so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you have been waiting for Pebble to throw a bone to Android users, a way of an app store wait no longer. The beta version of Pebble's Android app is now available through their site. It gives Pebble owners access to more than 1,000 apps for the smartwatch. Phil, I think you, uh, I think you're a fan, of Pebble. I think I heard I, I, through the grapevine. I might oh. have a brand new Pebble uh, Steel right here. Steel. So uh. now I want I want to hear about this because when that got announced, a friend of mine said it to me because I've been I've been on the edge of the smartwatch. You know, Jason, you know this. I mm -hmm. I really want a smartwatch. The Samsung uh, offering didn't impress me. The first round of Pebble didn't impress me. Phil, tell me about this. The Pebble Steel is is this the smart? You, it's it, it's night and day compared to the original Pebble. It yeah. really is. Um, I'm not 100% sure it's 100% better, but it's smaller. It's I think it's a tad thinner. Uh, definitely a, a smaller footprint in the face. The leather is so much nicer than the rubber. Now you can yeah. you know, switch bands on on the old school. Uh, but it really is nice here. I've got the the Link watch band here as well. Cool. Um, no, it's it, for $250. Look, it's it's definitely more expensive. Um, you know, what was the original Pebble? 149, I think. And, uh, you know, you had all sorts of deals with that so you can get it cheaper, but I like the hell out of this. I, you know, I've only had it for a couple hours now. Um, getting the Pebble app store onto phones is a huge deal. I, I don't think we can, you know, overstate that enough, how big a deal that is for Pebble to be able to bring that sort of thing under its own roof and control it a little better than, and, and that's, Nothing against the developer community for Pebble because all kinds of great people. Um, the, uh, the, uh, the German based watch face generator, I think today said uh, they did 160,000 watch faces on, on Monday. Um, you know, a, there's a whole bunch going on with Pebble, especially wow. with the uh, the 2.0 release of the software. Um, you know, and we're still in the we're still in the early stages. I wouldn't blame somebody for holding off. I, I have an old friend of mine messaging me right now on Facebook asking, you know, should I buy one of these for my husband? Um, I and I've used all of these, right? I, I've got I've got a, a Galaxy Gear sitting here. Um, I use the Qualcomm Talk for a while. We're still very much in the infancy. I'm real curious to see what Samsung brings next. I like the the kind of indie underdog yeah. nature yep. of Pebble Steel uh, of Pebble. I like the company. Uh, hung out there for a day in uh, December, and we did a big piece on them, and and got to meet the people there, and and that makes a difference to me a little bit editorially. So, um. It's. I think they've got more flexibility to do things that that people are going to want in a smartwatch. What's Ron? What are you worried about? What's holding you back? Well, the the thing that held me back from the first Pebble was the 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 e the e ink display. Mm -hmm. um, I just I, I I I want a more colorful kind of a better resolution kind of display. And I saw this had, when I saw a tricolor LED, but then I realized that's just the charging indicator light, right? right. It's not, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, um, you know, so it's it's really right now, it's this, like, if you could take the the uh, gutso of Pebble and the DIY spirit of it and put the Samsung watch display in it, then I think that would be what I want because um, I want innovation. I want to be able to put different apps onto it. Um, you know, even though I'm anti Samsung for for rolling out their smartwatch in their their own app store, and so I kind of need to apply the same thing to Pebble. I guess the, the same kind of line. I don't want another app store to manage it. Um, but you know, so I guess those are my two kind of things: is the independent app store and the uh, display being not very uh, not not very nice. Yeah, it's and I look at the displays. You know, on one end of the spectrum, you have Pebble and and e-paper and e-ink and on the other end you have amoled which you know samsung has always done really well but you've got to balance the battery life there and yeah. that's where you know amoled it just you know it's, it's night and day difference compared to 
you know, between, between that and between uh, Miracast, the what, Qualcomm stuff. What's been the What's been the battery life on the Samsung Watch in your experience? Does it Does it die quickly or? When I was using it, I was getting I was actually getting a little more than they advertised at first. Um, I need to sit down and use it some more since it's gotten some updates. But yeah, I mean, you're talking, you know, maybe three days versus four, five, six on Pebble. Well, I'm I'm fine. I, and that's the thing is that I would be fine with with taking the watch off and charging it overnight. I mean, that's how I do it on my phone, you know. And mm -hmm. like, very rarely can I think of a scenario where I'm out for three days without access to an outlet. So mm -hmm. it's like, you know, so that almost isn't a kind of a, a thing. But I really want to be able to just look at my phone and see a message coming mm -hmm. in or see a mail thing, and then you know, and not have to respond or do anything for it, but just have that linking of it. Um, and then I guess, I mean, and the Pebble isn't touchscreen or anything like that. You're just using the buttons, using the physical buttons. So all the apps have to be designed around those physical buttons. Is that correct? Or? Yeah. Um, the gestures that Samsung was using, I mean, you get used to them quickly enough, I think. I like the button scheme on Pebble, um, especially now that they've changed it a little bit. So when you're flipping through watch faces, it goes up and down with the buttons instead of left and right. Mm -hmm. um, in, I got used to it easily enough. I think Qualcomm had a lot of work still needed to be done with its gestures and, and where you have to press to get things to work on it. Um, Pebble is nice and simple. You've got, you know, four buttons and one is back, one is select and two are left and right or up and down. Um, I wish there were a better way for people to try these. And I yeah. think that's why it's so important. That's why we, we just started an entire website dedicated to, uh, to smartwatches, smartwatchfans.com for a plug. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Nicely uh, done. But I think it's that important because it's tough to, you know, you can't just go and, and try these out unless you're Samsung and you're in, you know, a Samsung store or a carrier store. But for everybody else, they're kind of relying on, on us to be the guinea pigs. Um, that'll change, I think. But yeah. it, it's a really exciting space. I can't wait to see what comes next. And I wasn't even a watch guy. I haven't worn a watch in years. Uh, you know, you don't need to. I'm in front of a computer all day. I have phones right. in my pockets yeah. and tablets. But but being able to get notifications. Um, in, in, in fact, that's the other thing I think Pebble has done better than everybody else is displaying the notifications um, that Samsung launched without being able to show, you know, Gmail or, you know, anything but its own apps was just, it was horrible. It was just Samsung trying to be first. Um, it's gotten a little better with the software updates, but I still think, and Qualcomm does it the same way Samsung does. They're just piggybacking the notifications instead of actually tapping into your account so they can show one email at a time because they're small screens with limited amount of space. And you need to be very, very, I think, discreet in what you're showing there. And, and Pebble has done that right. Yeah, no, I mean, that's the kind of thing where, I, I mean, I don't necessarily need to read the whole darn email, but if I can just get a quick look and see what the, who the emails are coming in from and, and the subject line, that tells me whether, okay, I need to stop what I'm doing, pull out my phone and go deal with this, I mean, from a work-based standpoint. Um, I will say the thing about Pebble Steel that got my eye is that it, it, it looks like a real watch as opposed to a toy. Right, right. Like the first one looked a little too plasticky and a little too toy for me. So, I mean, I'm, I'm, I mean, it was on the show. I was looking at Pebble Steel and, and, and I was like this close to pulling the trigger on it, but I just still, I'm like, ah, I don't know. So I don't know. Uh, but Phil, you've, you've really helped me in terms of getting a, a good feel for it, a good idea for it. Again, I haven't worn a watch in five years, six years, maybe. So it would definitely be a, uh, it would definitely be a status quo change. That's for sure. Uh, Might see some steel on your wrist. Maybe someday I don't think I would future. wear. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if I'd wear the the the, the big watch thing with the chain and stuff like that, like the, the metal <laughs> one. That's not that's not really my look. So I don't know. Yeah, but I'm tempted. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how we'll see how my tax return looks like. <laughs> uh, tax re tax return. Yeah. What what is that? Oh, uh, you're gonna you're you know oh, it won't be this year. It'll be next year. Yeah, but as a homeowner I, next year, you're I'll gonna, believe it when I see it. Oh no, I can assure say. you that was that was one of the best things. I would love to believe you, yep. but I still don't believe you. <laughs> uh, well, I guess this this is yours. There's not a whole lot to yeah, say. Yeah, so about this, this one, I was trying to think what to say, kind of how to how to approach this, but I really think I you just it's just two words that sum it up, and that's Flappy Bird. Yeah, I I, I, don't, I don't even know why we need to talk about it because apparently 10 million. Uh, people have downloaded now, this. Now, here's the thing. If 10 million people have downloaded this, have you downloaded it, Jason? I did today. Okay. Phil, have you downloaded Flappy Birds? I wrote that post you're showing right there. Oh, there, there. you go. You I have. Hate <laughs> this game. So, yes. I have not downloaded it yet. So, I don't know if the chat room, if according to 10 million, if everyone should be downloading it. I, I love your animated GIF, though. Uh, it's pretty much me playing the game right there. <laughs> I, I love the idea that it basically rips off, you know, Super Nintendo and it's using the same style yes, yes. animation and, and 
flat out stole the piping and you know whatever that's that's cool that's kitschy normally i would like that i think maybe i'm just anti flappy birds because it's it's just dumb. It's my, you know, I'm all for mindless games and wasting time. I played Jet Jetpack Joyride for hours. I played Plants vs Zombies too for hours. Uh, what's there's a third one I play a lot. I just totally forgot what it is. But there's something about this that is so damn frustrating. Yeah, it's and the guys I work with are trying to convince me that there's code in there to make you, uh, uh, you know, just die randomly (laughs) invisible walls and they might well be right um it's it's playing off this rage gamer in all of us that i can make it one more bite just one more oh it's it's like the idiocracy of of smartphone games now and you know we can do better yeah i uh i think i played for like five minutes and then uninstalled it because i was like i do not need this kind of frustration in my life well i know there's a 99 cent app out there that you can download and show your friends a fake flappy bird score. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> this uh, this is eerily similar to me playing earlier today. Yeah, oh, there you go. <laughs> it's just it's a different. It's almost like the game revels in uh, in poor being poorly designed. Even though this this may be just kind of intentional, right? And there's there's some there's some skill to this. Of course, it's just timing the jump. But it's, I don't know. This is just hard. See, look, right there, I saw It's it. too hard. There was invisible wall right there. <laughs> <laughs> it's just too hard, people. So go download it and become uh, 10 million and one. Oh, that just, it looks infuriating. Yeah, it is. I have no desire to participate. Yeah, in that's, that. then you probably shouldn't install no. it. Yeah, no. Nope. I will not be one of the 10 million. There you go. <laughs> uh, Michael Descala wrote in to AAA at twit.tv to say, hey, everyone, I was listening to the Mike and Mike show on ESPN Radio this morning, and Mike Golick, 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 brought Golick. up a, a Golick. Yeah, I should know this. Uh, brought up an excellent point slash problem with all smartphones. If your phone has some type of lock on it, a pin or pattern lock, etc., you can only make an emergency call. What if you were the one involved in the emergency? How do the authorities get a hold of your in case of an emergency contact? As you all know, there's no way to override the lock screen except to make an emergency call. So is there an app that could possibly allow emergency responders to see and call your ICE contacts? It's just kind it's of a, something I hadn't thought about. It's a valid point. It's very Absolutely. valid. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, thankfully, there are a lot of apps. If you do a search, uh, just do a Google search for ICE, I-C-E, and play, and you'll get a bunch of apps. And uh, one of those that came back that I thought kind of looked pretty pretty good is is called ICE in case of an emergency or in case of emergency uh, by app ventive and uh, this is this is an app that you can basically you know if you're on a later version of Android you can integrate it into your lock screen as a widget and it essentially allows you to store you know who who to call if you have any allergies medication conditions all that kind of stuff and embed it into a single clickable widget on your lock screen and because it's a lock screen widget uh, you can place that however you want. Do you want it on the front Ooh. or to the side or whatever so that if someone needs to pick up your phone and get in touch with one of your contacts to let them know that you're not doing so hot, <laughs> whatever the case may be, they can do that. Uh, it is also compatible with older versions of Android uh, so it can replace the lock screen with its own lock screen. So It's cool. Um, it's three ninety nine. dollars It's probably so, worth it, though, in the, in the long run. Sure. Well, especially yeah. if it's used. Um, so there you go. But yeah, do a search for ICE and play, uh, or go to the play store and do a search for ICE and you'll find a bunch of them. This one kind of looked like the best one. There's also the, uh, other application that I like to call a folded piece of paper in your wallet. (laughs) Wallet. What is that? We're all leaving our wallets at home because we have Google wallet, right? Are, Are you? No. no. <laughs> nope. I did get my Google Wallet card, by the way. I haven't set it up yet. Oh. What I are you going to use it for? Uh, I don't know. I haven't decided. What do you, do you have one? I have to imagine you have a Google Wallet card, Phil. And, oh, uh, I was you, just thinking, yes, I have one. Let me gonna show our cards. I got, <laughs> blow the dust off it. Yeah, yeah exactly. I haven't used it once. <laughs> uh, yeah. There what you I go. love is that I put it in my wallet without even attaching it to any. There's no money on this. There's not a link to any account. <laughs> like I got it, I registered it, and I put it in the wallet. So I keep it just in case I get mugged, so I can hand that over. Yeah. I exactly. think, just take it. Just take it. <laughs> Everything that I own is on this card. Yep. Uh, all right. Cool. Well, there you go. I also like that I don't have a piece of paper folded with emergency contacts in my thing. So here I am. See, you need to you need to install this app then. Yeah. 
Maybe you should have featured that app in the arena. I should have. Or the one that you picked. Speaking of arena, it's arena time. So many enter, <laughs> but only one lives. Android Arena. The roll of the R gets me every time. Arena. <laughs> Last week, we had four apps, and Stack Exchange was the top pick at 42%. I knew it. Yeah, you knew that? Oh, I knew Wait that one was going to win. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that one was, was uh, yeah, yeah. So. Uh, let's see here. THX Tune Up, uh, 29%. Soundfields Winter at 16%. And Beats Music I'm going to last. I'm going to chalk 12%. up that loss because someone on Twitter barked at me and talking about tone, and they're like, oh, you're clearly going to lose because Beats Music is U.S. only. So I was like, all right, oh. fine. So yeah. that's what I'm going to chalk up my loss to. There, so you, there go. you go. Yeah. So. Blame it on the U.S. only. Blame mm -hmm. it on America. All right. So, Ron, you go first? are the loser. So you go first. <laughs> you put it like that. It's very hard to get motivated. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you are this week's upcoming winner. <laughs> All right. Well, then. So um, so last week, if you tuned in last week, you might have noticed that I uh, very narrowly uh, presented a game that was already chosen in the arena, but I caught it the last minute, went with Beats Music instead. This week, I felt as if I needed to vindicate that and go uh -huh. with the game because it's been a while since I've gone with the game. And generally... The games I go for are the kind of lighter games, more casual. Uh, I spend it while I'm commuting, so I'm sitting on Muni or on the on Bart. I just want something to do to get me uh, through the pass it through time. And I will gotta notice that I went through about probably about five or six games this week, just trying them out. And the number of games that are completely network uh, intensive <clears throat> is it, it, baffling because I'm going through the tunnel and and I can't I I don't have a solid connection and I was oh. playing a a soccer game like a free kick soccer game and the only mode you could do was to play against other live people I'm like no I just want a little sandbox to play yeah. in and so anyway so um, luckily I did find a, a, a game it is a new game uh, it is called Line L Y N E and I I had it installed I have it installed on my phone and that's what I've been playing on for most of it this week I installed it here on the um, on the tablet to a give the bigger screen but also kind of show you guys the uh the kind of uh kind of tutorial walkthrough because i always find that's a good way but it's uh very nicely designed it's got that nice kind of modern kind of look it's got uh some very calming music that you'll, you'll hear shortly um it does go through a little bit of loading so is that in yeah, yeah i think it was out a little bit all right Got a little status bar as it loads and basically the the idea of this game is purely just to connect the dots um, there are several la, different shapes. There are several la, different la, shapes, la, shape sizes, <laughs> shape sizes, and the purpose of the game is to connect point A to point B um, of each of the different kind of shapes. So, um, if this ever loads, I don't know why it's taking so long. There you go. So it comes in. It's got that very kind of modern design look. So I'm gonna hit begin, and it's gonna walk through the kind of tutorial. <clears throat> yes. So it just very easily tells you what you need to do. So these little ones are the starting points, and the solid ones are the middle ones. And so with this, there you go. Oh. Yeah, there's a little music. And so here, I'm just going to connect these. And what they do is that they take this whole concept, and now you can they make it a little more complicated by putting them around the board. I don't know if you could tell, but there are these subtle yeah. little diagonal lines, so I could connect it diagonally. And you see here, I missed those two, so I just hit that to start again, and I go, whoop, and there we go. All right. So now it gets a little harder as they put in two shapes on the board, you know. And this is super, super easy because this is the tutorial. And I'll speed through this so we can actually get to the actual game. Um, but you start to see how it gets a little more complicated, a little bigger every time. I got to tell you, I've just sat for minutes, like, you know, a good 45 minutes or so on the train just playing this in kind of a bit of a trance. Um, admittedly, I do turn off the music, though, because I listen to podcasts while I'm doing this. But um, – and I – as and again this is the tutorial so it's a little easier but as the game develops it gets really hard and kind of complicated and so you find yourself trying to figure it out and it's enough of a challenge that it makes you really stop and think and look at it but not enough so that it ruins your time with the game because sometimes it can be so hard from early mm -hmm, on that you mm -hmm. just it's just like oh I don't, this isn't even any fun i don't even want to do this anymore so yeah, and I like the pace at which it moves. It doesn't waste time with, like, you cleared four things. All right, now on to the next one. It just kind of takes you right there. Exactly. Now, this is cool. This little blue widget is one where you can run two lines through. It's kind of a little junction box. So I can do this, and then I can do that. Um, because the thing is, is that you cannot 
um, you can't like because I've done this line, you can't go where there's a line already. Like right. you get blocked. Yeah. So um, you can't so, cross the streams. Exactly. So it gets very clever about how it uses this uh, that bit of functionality to within the game. And it's just really kind of soothing, and it's kind of fun, and you know, and it's I, I've enjoyed it this whole week, and so I'm gonna skip the, the tutorial now. I'm gonna just hit end, and so now you see, and basically it's the similar kind of Angry Bird style of uh, levels where you have to finish a level in order to unlock it. So like here, you know, this won't work because I didn't fill in those two boxes. So I need to figure out how to utilize that and still be able to do it. Um, what's interesting about this is that when you when you get the game initially, it comes with several levels that you need to play through and you can unlock them and all that sort of stuff. But I see I forgot one. There mm -hmm. you go. Ah, look at that. Um, but what is also interesting is that in addition to the levels that are baked into the game, the developers are releasing daily levels that you can download on a daily basis. See, so I didn't get that one. Um, that you can download on a daily basis in order to get fresh and new content. So you, if you play through all the, the levels, it's okay because every day there's 20 more levels for you to, to challenge against. And they add different, they add even more shapes and, and it gets bigger and they add more junctions and things like that. So it's it's pretty cool. So it's called Line. It's totally free. L-Y-N-E. L-Y-N-E. Yeah, exactly. It's very soothing. And look at that. Ooh. Well, it's no Flappy Bird, but it looks pretty good. <laughs> Yeah, where's the flappy at, huh? Yeah, exactly. There's no flapping going on here. So line, totally free. So <laughs> yeah, no. Oh, it's 250. I'm sorry. Oh my gosh, it's 250. $2.50. But the game was so good, I don't even remember paying for it. <laughs> How about that? I, I think uh I think one one impressive thing about this game is that yeah. you were able to play you know, relatively hard levels and still talk and everything. <laughs> they weren't that hard. It gets it gets much harder. I'm if sure I, it, yeah, I'm sure I, it does. Wait, hang on. Let me pull up my phone. But sometimes showing off a game and talking about it is oh, yeah, about it's the most impossible yeah, yeah. thing Here. you can do. If we go to the phone, my phone my phone's <laughs> dirty, so I'm sorry, but um, I can show you the level I'm on now and you can see the difference between the entry point like, you know, levels. So load faster line. There we go. There we go. All right. So bling. So here, here you can see, okay. and there's the daily levels, and uh -huh. if I hit that, it would download them. But if I go back to here, you see... That's cool. I, I really like yeah. that. Um, so here you go. So here's the level that day. I left off on, um, which looks somewhat easy, but with those three junctions, it gets it gets very difficult. Yeah, so, some of them yeah. require two pass-throughs. Another yep. one requires three. Exactly. I want to... Uh, yeah, that would... I want to go to one be right difficult. before this. Yeah, there we go. So... Yeah. So ah! when, yeah. So when you when you get three shapes in and three pass throughs and stuff like that, I mean, there have been a couple times where I'm like, come on. But honestly, it's, I've never wrestled with it for more than a minute or two. Right. Which, to, if you ask me, it's just challenging enough to make it fun in a game, but not yeah. challenging enough to make you hate it. Yeah. So there you go. So like, <laughs> oh, you mean make you hate it? Like Flappy Bird? Flappy how Bird. it's impossible and. <laughs> You'll uninstall it. Yeah. Uh, that's a great pick. Line, L-Y-N-E. Uh, look for $2.50. $2.50, sorry, but it's worth it. And now, store. Absolutely. Phil's going to beat me now. Phil, it's time <laughs> for you to attempt to beat Ron. Yes, summon. <laughs> <laughs> summon the bird. So, I've been remiss in not writing about this uh, this following app on my own time because it's it's really good. I'm always in search of a better Twitter app, uh, mainly because I hate Twitter. I love Twitter. I can't quit Twitter, but Twitter's not the most developer friendly, yeah, platform out there. Yeah. And so if you're not using an official Twitter app, chances are the one you are using is going to die at some point because it, well, it won't necessarily die. But there are issues with tokens and, and getting new users. If you don't know the long sorted story, I won't get into it. Uh, but it, it can be tough, right? And we hear the horror stories of developers, really good developers getting out of the, the Twitter business because there's a ceiling on how much money they could possibly make off it. Uh, so it's really nice to see this app called uh, Talon come into play here relatively recently, actually, and they've been updating pretty frequently. Um, it's still not necessarily 100% to what I would like to see. It's it's really, really good, though. The user interface is simple. Um, you know, everything is where you would expect it. You've got a whole bunch of options there. It's laid out very nicely. Um, I think this is probably my second favorite Twitter app at this point, but more important is it's available to get 
new users and, and still has tokens left. Uh, so, you know, you're going to have to pay a little bit of money for it, and that's fine. I, I absolutely think Twitter apps need to be, you know, for pay at this point because of, of token issues. And, you know, if you're not going to do it out of the goodness of your heart, it should cost a little money. Um, yeah, and, and it's that simple, right? A Twitter app should not be difficult to use, and, and Talon has done really we're really well at presenting individual tweets making it easy to reply making it easy to uh to get your dms and, and you know it's just that simple there's not a lot to say other than it's a really good simple twitter app that you can still get if you're looking for one interesting that these it's from the same developers who did uh, that evolve sms app that uh, yep. I remember i showed oh, the week yeah. it came out mm -hmm. which i've been told has been improved and and they've dealt with the loading thing and i tried it again i still the same problem so it's not quite there yet but um, but they are very they the, these developers are very good at UI and putting stuff together in a pretty package. So yeah, yeah, yeah I've been very great. impressed with it. Yeah, that's man. I I always wonder when I see a new Twitter app because as a developer, you pour all of this time and you know constant constant time updating it and and upgrading it and all that kind of stuff. You know when you start developing a Twitter app that your time is limited or yeah. rather your your number of new users is limited and you're going to reach a cap eventually no matter how successful it is. Uh it's just interesting that we continue to see more and more it's it's a real really a bummer that that Twitter doesn't keep it open cuz it keeps people engaged with the service. Yeah. Um, and I like and these that. are really well designed apps, and their official app is not. I, I, I don't it's know if it's, a, it's been a while since I used. Yeah, it. I don't know if it's right. is not is a little harsh because yeah. I because I because I do find it yes, it's it's functional right. and it's good. But like the thing is, is that I like the innovation that comes up, and this is a different yes. way to visualize tweets and things like that. And I think when you have an open API, you see that you see that opportunity for innovation to happen, and to close it off just is kind of totalitarian. So yeah, it's it's a hard hard reprogramming that we as people who have used plenty of Twitter apps have yep. to do, which is realize that, you know, the old way of, of Twitter just allowing everybody to kind of innovate and make yeah. all these great design apps, that's kind of, that's not the way it is now. Right. And uh, that's that's hard to kind of erase the memory of that. Because, yeah. Um, yeah, this is a fantastic looking uh, Twitter app. That's great. It's called Talon. And you can check it out at the Play Store. It is, let's see here, $1.99 it looks like the play store so cheaper than ron's app yeah wow phil is just not messing around i love just it say it <laughs> cheaper cheaper well how about um let me check double check that i didn't pay for this one which is how ironic considering it's installed you can't I know, tell yeah no, that would totally be ironic that's what, yeah that's why i thought it was how about free. a free app yeah uh, it's and actually this app shouldn't shouldn't need to exist <laughs> there should be no reason that this app is it, it even exists because the play store should, should have this yep. functionality in it and if i remember correctly used to and now it does not and this app is called my paid apps do you have a lot of paid apps you go to the play store and you try and find them just them and you can't because google no longer allows you uh to search just buy the apps that you paid for. It only shows you, wait a minute, what am I doing here? <laughs> My paid apps. I must have got there through, oh, I see, yeah, yeah. I got there through the app. Um, Google only shows you all the apps that you've installed. And for a person like me, for probably all of us, oh, uh, we've installed a ton of apps on our devices. Um, so filtering through there and finding just the ones that we paid for, it can get really difficult. So here are all the apps uh, that I, is this all that so I? So how is it doing it? Uh, that's a good Magic. question. I don't ask questions like that. <laughs> I don't know how they do it, but they do. Uh, so anyways, it, it basically breaks out all the apps that you have associated with your account. You can pick, you know, any of your, your Google accounts, essentially. And so I have this tab uh, for Android apps that I've paid for. You can see on the side what I paid for it. This is a really great way to see how much you've spent uh. <laughs> over the years on all of your apps that are installed. It's a little, the text is a little small, so it's kind of hard to read on the screen. But um, it also shows you kind of some of the devices that you've purchased through the Play Store. Uh, in-app purchases and payments, um, your movies, your music, and then it breaks it out into all of these different things. Animation, like I, you know, I bought Monsters University. It basically just shows you all the things you've ever paid for through the Play Store. 
Um, but I think it's just a great way to kind of take a look, at least the reason that I downloaded it, is to take a look at all the apps that I thought were good enough that I would spend money on them. Because a lot of times, and I've, I've gone through a lot of devices and different updates to ROMs, although this Nexus 5 is not rooted uh, yet. Um, <laughs> I've, I've done it a lot. And every time I do it, I want to install new apps. You know, I've, I bought so many of them. And so some of them fall through the crack and I cracks and I forget that I even have them. Uh, my paid apps is a way of finding them, plus a whole lot of other stuff. I, I can't believe this exists. I know. It should, it's, it's, yeah. it's crazy yeah. that this needs to exist. Uh, Google just needs to add that functionality back into the Play Store or just, you know, be the be the awesome search company that they are and, and yep. just add something that makes it easier to find those kinds it's of things. It's just a filter. It's just how, yeah. how hard should it just be like paid or free filter? They do it in their own store. Yeah. yeah. So, so interesting. there you go. My paid apps. Shouldn't exist, but it does. And, and you're going to uh, use I'm happy it. that it does. <laughs> there we go. All right. Three apps this week covered on today's episode. You can vote for your favorite app by going to aaapoll.com slash 147. It's aaapoll.com slash 147 for this week's episode. Go ahead and click through there. Let's see here. Three. Oh, let's yeah, see here. Brian. Line. Hey. <laughs> Line is up at the top Look at right that, now. Yeah. It's, it's early votes. days. They're all they're all pretty uh, pretty even at this point. Yeah, take that. Love it when they start like this. <laughs> hang on, hang on. I haven't voted for myself yet. <laughs> Ten times. <laughs> oh, that's real time. That's cool. Yeah, yeah that's that updates really, in real time. Not only is it real time, but it also logs your IP and doesn't let you vote numerous times. So there you go. And if you well, do, wait, it, wait, how does this VPN work? Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> nope. If you do that, it kicks you off the internet forever. Yep. So. Exactly. So oh, my paid apps making a making a run for it. <laughs> there we go. I don't know. We'll see. You never know where this is going. I need to a win, be. folks. I need a win. I'm not begging, but I'm just saying. Uh, I actually, need a win. Ron is begging. He's not. He, you are not beneath begging. I'm not beneath it. Nope. <laughs> that is it for this week's episode. What a great episode it was, and Phil. You're a huge reason for that. Thank you so much for coming on yet again. Thanks for having me again. It's always fun. Let's not wait five years to do it next time. Okay, we'll wait three years. How about that? Right. Uh, cool. Well, this is your opportunity to tell people what you're up to, where people can find your work, really anything you want to plug. Go for it. Oh, man. Uh, AndroidCentral.com is where I am all the time. Um, you know, all the Mobile Nation sites, we're all kind of writing on each other's sites more often than than usual these days. <laughs> yeah, I've noticed If I show up on Crackberry, don't freak out. Um, <laughs> You know, and, and what's the point of having logins if I don't abuse it every now and then? So uh, Smartwatch Fans is our newest one. We're awesome. we're definitely pushing that as much as we can. Uh, Phil Nickinson on Google Plus and Twitter and all that stuff if you if you care about things other than smartphones. So. Fantastic. You guys are doing great work. I love the network. Um, all, Appreciate it. All the different sites. Good work. Uh, so great. there you go. Android Central uh, as well as a whole lot of other places. Ron, what about you? Well, you can find me over at about.me slash ronxo, and that's all links to my Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. I think it's, I don't know, all the social stuff. Uh, and I'm on Google Plus at google.com slash plus Ron Richards. Um, and by day, I help make comic books over at Image Comics. Uh, so go to imagecomics.com where you can download DRM-free comic books to your heart's content, like The Walking Dead and Saga and East of West and great comics, the future of comics, in fact. So there you go. You have a cool job, I gotta say. Sometimes, not unlike uh, some. Sometimes you spend four hours in front of spreadsheets, like I did today. <laughs> so. hey, you guys make yep. great stuff. We do. We try. We it's try. Good. Check out Black Science. It's a brand new science fiction uh, comic that I'm a big fan of. So Twenty yeah. years ago, when you were younger, would if you oh, were no. to look look ahead yeah. in, in your life and, and know that you were working with Image Comics, and, mind blowing. Yeah, yeah mind blowing. Yeah, 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 yeah I'm very lucky. I thank my lucky stars every every morning. That's so, awesome. Yep, so. uh, Brian, what about you? I'm sure 20 years ago, if you were to look in the future and say, <laughs> I was TDing, I was technical director of all that Android, you just wouldn't believe it. You'd be like, what? But you would right. you believe it would blow my mind, Jason. I, <laughs> in 20 years, I'll be TDing all about Android and not paying attention and miss a breaking news cue. That uh, you would yeah. be brutal. <laughs> that, that would cut deep. But, you know, I didn't miss the Spain one. Yes, so. true. Viva España. <laughs> I think I made up for it. You did, you did. <laughs> Brian, <laughs> where, you won. Where can people find you cranky hippo uh like you said uh, on twitter cranky underscore hippo uh if you do brianburnett.com go straight to my google plus page uh, but that's about it i mean you'll be able to see where i get all my great ideas for td stuff you know <laughs> awesome look there yeah there's so much stuff motorcycles and robots <laughs> and uh android stuff basically and, and butterflies what 
Uh, you can find me at about.me slash Jason Howell. I'm uh, on Google Plus, uh, plus Jason Howell, or my music can be found at yellowgoldmusic.com. That is it for this week. Thank you so much for joining us once again. Thank you to the chat realm for keeping us honest and being awesome, as always. Uh, you guys show up week after week, and it's great having you guys uh, in there pitching in. Voicemail, 347-SHOW-AAA. Email, AAA at twit.tv. Reddit, twit, uh, AAA at reddit.com. Uh, show notes for past episodes, twit.tv slash AAA. And finally, you can catch us live every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Pacific, live.twit.tv. That is it for this week. We'll see you next week on another episode of All About Android. Oh, I went through that a little bit faster than normal. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. Well, it's a lot of stuff to say. Bye.